Welcome to Calvary Temple Church in St. John, New Brunswick. We are so pleased to be able to worship the Lord with you today. And uh, we encourage you on this Pentecost Sunday to uh, just press into the Lord, open your heart to Him, and allow Him to fill you and strengthen you. Let's pray together as we begin our time of worship today. Jesus, thanks for this day. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to worship you. And we thank you for the means that you've given us, Lord, through these online tools to connect with people, to worship you, to meet in your name, and to proclaim you as king. I pray today, Lord God, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit power. Right now, Lord, come and strengthen us. Come and guide us. Come and lead us. Come and correct us. That today we would be filled with your courage for witness. That we would have, Lord, that dynamo supernatural power at work within our lives. And I pray today that in these moments we would savor each moment together in your presence. We would press into you and see you do great things. Do what you want, Lord. Heal sick bodies. Restore homes, Lord. Encourage people today. Bring hope and purpose in lives. We thank you for this time. Have your way, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord together as Pastor Laura comes to lead us.
never lost. He's never lost. This morning as we continue to worship the Lord, I wanted to share with you uh, briefly uh, a little uh, thank you Jesus note that we received uh, last Sunday evening uh, from Winston. And uh, this was uh, planned to be a part of our 5.11 segment last Sunday. Uh, but this is the message that I received, and I felt to share it today. It says, Good evening, pastors. Hope all is well. My words of encouragement is late for today, but everything happens for a reason. So true. He says, Could be for someone in the future. As we go through these unforeseen times, I encourage fellow believers with Psalm 91, verses 14 to 15. These are God words to us if we love him. You guys have a blessed night. Psalm 91, verses 14 to 16 reads, The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Wow. Wow. I really do believe that that is for someone today. And thank you, Winston, for reaching out and sharing this encouragement today. I pray that little word will encourage you today and confirm to you God's presence and God's power. Let's continue to worship the Lord through music at this time.
Jesus. Right here, right now, we are together with you, Lord. And we gather together today and we pray for those needs that may be represented, concerns, prayer requests, issues, areas of lack, areas of need, and we give those things to you, Lord God. We pray for those today who need employment. We pray for those today who need provision, Lord. We ask that you would work in this way, in this day. Bring answers, Lord, divine solutions to these needs. We pray, Lord, for family restoration. We pray for relationships. That in this very day, there would be restoration and reconciliation between family members, Lord. We pray today, God, that you would bring encouragement to the soul. That you would bring refreshing to minds, Lord, to weary hearts today. We ask, God, that you would bring salvation to hearts and lives. Draw people to yourself. May people put faith in you today, Lord Jesus, and have purpose in life. We pray for those who may have known you before in a relationship, but have wandered. We ask today that they would recognize this is the day of salvation. This is the day that we can come to know you. We pray today for those who are sick in body. We pray today for Betty Corey in the hospital. We pray, Lord, you would surround her with your presence now. We pray for this need, and we ask God, you great physician, work, heal, guide, direct the doctors, minister however you wish, Lord. We pray for your will to be done. We pray for Betty. Encourage her today. Flow through that body, Lord. Any other needs, Lord, minister. Prove yourself as all sufficient one as protector. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. We love you. Have your way in Jesus' name. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. by time and space. He's not limited by any constraints that we can have in our lives or challenges that we can have, difficulties that we can have. I thank the Lord that he's greater than all of those things and we can trust in him and find hope in him. Today we want to take the next few moments and turn our attention to announcements and to giving. And so I'll quickly remind you that our uh, weekly church bulletin which is a document that gives you an update of the various aspects of worship in our church, is online on our website. That's kind of the common place to, to gather, especially when we can't meet together in person. Please see www.calvarytemplesj.com, and our weekly bulletin is there with all the details that you need. And also on our website, you will find uh, a calendar for the month of June, and uh, you need to see that if you're able to, to know what's happening right now in our church. We do have a uh, little of uncertainty. We were hoping to gather in person today, uh, but that was not able to happen with the current situation with COVID-19 in our province. And so we fully honor the, the guidelines of the public health uh, department, and we are watching those closely. But please stay tuned, because as soon as we're safely able to, we hope to gather and worship in person. So please uh, be uh, carefully attentive to any updates, but our calendar and our bulletin have the information that we know right now to plan to go forward. So we remind you that on Monday, tomorrow, at 1 o'clock, there is prayer at the church in person here. It is limited to a maximum of 10 people as per the guidelines from the government. It's honoring two-meter physical distancing, and uh, so please be aware of that. And then, of course, our online worship gatherings are happening this week. We have a Bible chat with Pastor Chad on Tuesday night. That's me, 7 o'clock, and we are looking at listening to God. This was a topic that was selected by the 15 or 20 people that participate in that uh, study, and we're looking at developing a deeper dialogue with God. How do you dialogue with God? On Wednesday at 2 o'clock, we have an online interactive prayer meeting, and if you have any requests or concerns that you'd like to give to God and allow us to partner with you to pray, please uh, contact us and let us know. On Friday, we also have an online Bible study with Pastor O'Coin, and he's been working through Peter's teachings from the New Testament, and that's been a great study as well. And then on Friday night, our teens and young adults 
The young families participate in something we call Deep Water Next Gen Ministry, 7 o'clock. And those Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday gatherings are using the online tool Zoom. And so you need to get the Zoom invite emailed to you. And if you don't have that or want that, please email us and we will gladly converse further with you. So as I mentioned already, please stay tuned for when we can uh, worship together in person. We're very cautious about doing that to keep everyone safe. And there are a number of guidelines. So whenever we are able to gather with groups of 50 or less, it will be very different than what we've experienced before because of COVID. So please be aware of that and know that we are following those instructions carefully and it won't be just like good old usual time. Last thing I want to mention in the way of announcements, we are so excited that next Sunday we're beginning a brand new teaching series on Sunday mornings for the month of June. And that's called The Father's Heart. And this is going to be a very pivotal uh, teaching series for our church. We're looking at some vision and where God wants us to go and what God wants us to do. So be in prayer about that. Be ready for that coming next week. It is our time for uh, tithes and offerings. And so we remind you, again, please go to our website. You can find all the details there of how to worship the Lord with your finances. There's a bunch of different ways that you can give. And thank you for your faithfulness. God is so great. And he has inspired you to worship him through your finances. And we're able to continue this work of spreading the good news of Jesus around the world through the work of this church. So thank you and God bless you. We appreciate you. Please today, before we end our worship time, consider how you can worship the Lord even through your finances. We're going to move into a teaching time this morning. And uh, we wanted to do this different for this Pentecost Sunday. And so today, Pastor Laura and myself will be tag team preaching. So we're both going to be teaching and sharing today. Here comes Pastor Laura. Mm -hmm. Power. That's three lines. Are you coming right back? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a spirit. Power. Isn't it a beautiful thing? You know, we are really blessed in this city. We are very blessed. And just as a, a note, uh, in case you're visiting, we are from the same household, so we may be a little closer than six feet, but that's allowed, just so you know. We are very blessed, related to power, in our city. Did you know that St. John Energy, even though that utility is 98 years old today, not just today, but this year, it is an energy provider that provides energy for tens of thousands of customers in St. John. And their electricity rates are the lowest in the region and account for about 10% savings for residential customers. Uh, this is really, really interesting to me because through various customer surveys, St. John Energy is one of North America's highest rated electric utilities. In fact, some reports have said it is the highest rated. It's the second largest utility in New Brunswick. St. John Energy customers consistently suffer fewer and shorter outages than other customers of other utilities. St. John Energy also charges less for what customers view as a better service. St. John Energy has very quick response times, and it's known for excellent customer service. So I want to ask you this. We're talking about power, in case you didn't clue in. It is Pentecost Sunday today. I want to ask you this question that's rolling in behind me, or, or, or running me over, one of the two. <laughs> The question I want to ask us today as we begin is, why is power so important? I didn't have enough room here, so I just put, why is power in? And so if you're able to, why don't you uh, Facebook us in on our Calvary Temple Facebook page, uh, if you can, or text me if you wish. But I want some answers right now live. This is why I love not pre-recording church. We, we do it live so we can have a real, raw feel of just like almost being in person if you've been around here. We're, we're pretty raw and real. Why is good, reliable power so important? You can, you can answer like literally electricity. Why is it good to have electricity? Or if you want to get into other things. I have somebody here in our in our crew that is doing this service, I think, that has an answer. It helps you get a shower. Helps you get a shower. Yes, indeed. Yeah, why is power important? Helps get... Shower. My penmanship is horrendous. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, why is in, why is important so power? Why is power so important? You can talk spiritually or emotionally or mentally. Why is power 
so important? Why is electricity important? Why is good, reliable power so important? Anyone? Shelly says it's necessary for medical equipment. Okay. So it's necessary for medical equipment. Someone just wrote in. Yeah. Um, okay. Keep in touch. Someone just wrote with family. Yeah. Want some more coming in? I'm going to throw this in. Uh, 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 I'll just say right. I'll put right here, right now. Okay? Right here, right now. Because right when you uh, really need it is when it's so important. For example, when the turkey just went in the oven. <laughs> kind of an important time to have electricity. When the turkey just went in the oven is a bad time for the power to go up. So oh, that's spiritual. Read <laughs> Bible at night. Interesting story. I have a headlight that goes on my head that's on an elastic band, and if there's no power, I, I walk around with that on, I kind of look like a freight train. It's a little weird. Ooh, eat. Now that's something I like doing. Yep. Yeah. Times two, to keep in touch. It kind of looks like it says Torah or Toga. Uh, nope, I don't have warmth. Somebody wrote in warmth. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. No more interruptions. Yes, live stream's nice. Yeah, that's true. Devos, yeah. So I think we've gathered, sorry if we're going to miss your uh, contribution to this discussion, but I think we've gathered that, uh, we can move this somewhere, sorry. We've gathered that power is important. Having power. Why is power so important? We're talking about this today. Here comes Pastor Laura. Where do you get your physical, emotional, mental, intellectual, social, and spiritual energy from? What energizes you? So please don't forget some sermon note helps are available for you right now on our church website at www.calvarytemplesj.com. This is our fifth and final biblical presentation in our month of May 2020 Sunday morning teaching series entitled Springboard, Screening Forward with God. And the title of this morning's Bible exploration is The Spirit of the Lord, very fitting for Pentecost Sunday. So how do we spring forward with faith in God? It is helpful for modern day followers of Jesus Christ to discover how our Lord labored in the power of the Holy Spirit. For the same Holy Spirit is available and is eager to enable us as we seek to render ministries in the name of Christ today. So in other words, it's not something from the past, it's not something from the future, it is something now, and something that we can and have availability to. So let's look at the birth of Jesus. I know everyone's thinking Christmas, my favorite time of year, and I will talk about it as long as I want. Just joking. The birth of Jesus was a creative act on the part of the Holy Spirit. Remember Matthew 1, 20 and Luke 1, 35. In addition to recognizing the virgin purity of Mary, we should recognize the work of the Holy Spirit in the miraculous conception of the Word that became flesh. It's kind of neat. Jesus was anointed and identified as a Messiah during his baptism by John the Baptist in John 1, 32 to 34. Remember the dove coming down? Jesus overcame temptation with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led Christ into confrontation with the evil one, or Satan. And by means of Christ's pure manhood, his reliance on the word of God, and the assistance of the Holy Spirit, he did not fall for those temptations. In the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus healed the sick, cast out demons, and led his listeners to a new understanding of the nature and purpose of God. Matthew 12, 17-18. Continuing with the Holy Spirit, through the eternal Spirit, Christ offered himself on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, Hebrews 9, 14. And the Holy Spirit was at work in Christ's resurrection as well. By his resurrection from the dead, he was declared to be the powerful Son of God, Romans 1, 4. The Holy Spirit has done a lot. Has Chet? Yes. He has. And, you know, I, I wanted to share this. I debated sharing this, but I thought it was kind of cute. 
How many Pentecostals does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> Ten. One to change the bulb and nine to pray against the spirit of darkness. <laughs> Let's move on to our last point number two. We need to see as we think about power and the Holy Spirit and who he is, see how the first disciples of Jesus were imprinted by the Holy Spirit. There are many remarkable parallels between the ministry of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' life in ministry that he wishes to render in the lives of his first followers. And so we see that there was a spiritual birth experience, and that's how people and the first disciples became children of God through faith in Jesus. We see this in several Bible passages in John 3, Galatians 3, and Titus 3. Notice they were all chapter 3 of those three uh, Bibles, Bible books. The Holy Spirit identifies believers as children of God and gives assurance of salvation. Also, the Holy Spirit is working in power to be able to minister through believers and spread the name of Christ through the world. The Holy Spirit was sent into the world and dwells within, within the lives of those who have opened their lives to Jesus, and he functions as a divine teacher a guide into all truth about God, says John 14 and John 16. The presence of the indwelling spirit in the heart of the believer is God's guarantee of his final and complete salvation from the presence of sin when Jesus Christ returns for his own, like it talks about in Romans 8 and Ephesians 1. Pastor Laura. Experience the baptism Pentecostal power of the Holy Spirit. John 20, 22 says, Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. That is the beginning of the Holy Spirit dwelling in believers upon salvation. Stay tuned, because there's more and more coming. Don't you just love to get a little taste out of the baker's mixing bowl? When I'm making cookies or anything else, Pastor Chad loves to ask, can I have a bowl, can I have a spoon, how about the beaters? And if I forget to give them to him, he's very, very disappointed. And that's what we see here. It's a foretaste, a foretelling. John the Baptist speaks of an even greater baptism that will be in God. Matthew 3, Mark 1 says, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Luke 11, 13 says, So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? What do you say? Who will baptize with the Holy Spirit? John 1, 33 said, I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And then it happened, Luke 3, 22, and the Holy Spirit in a bodily form descended on him like a dove, which I mentioned earlier, and a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. The promise of the Holy Spirit's deeper and greater baptizing power can be found in John 14, 16 to 18. It was Jesus who said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. That's kind of a nice thought, isn't it? He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Jesus never left us. Even though he went to heaven, he sent the advocate to be with us so that we would never be alone. Acts 1, 4 to 5 says, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Pastor Chad. So not only did the Holy Spirit be very active in Jesus' life, not only did the Holy Spirit function and work in the lives of the first believers, but the Holy Spirit indeed does bring a Pentecostal baptism 
in lives of believers who are open to him. When I was a kid, mom and dad would have to be careful telling me when we were going to go away on a trip. I had a tendency to just get so excited. I, I would end up sometimes making myself physically sick because I, I was so wound up and so excited. I'd lose sleep, and then my asthma would act up, and I'd have more problems. I was just so stoked. The anticipation was too much for me. Regarding the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it happened. It really, really happened. We see the first instance of believers in Jesus being overwhelmed, being consumed with the Holy Spirit's power with the initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues for the first time in the, in the book of uh, Acts, chapter 2, in the New Testament. And I'm going to read a few of those verses. If you have your Bible, feel free to open as we read a few verses together from Acts, chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says, And on the day of Pentecost, which was a beautiful feast, all, all the believers were meeting together in one place, not divided, not in a bunch of different places, not scatter scattered, no, no, they were all, all together in one place. Verse 2 says, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. It filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone, it says in verse 4, everyone, say that word with me right now, everyone present was filled. And the Holy Spirit began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. And at that time there were many devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. And when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers, they were completely amazed. They said, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, but we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pam Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya, and Cyrene, visitors from Rome, Cretans, Arabs, we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things that God has done. They stood amazed and they said, what can this mean? They looked at each other and asked. Others in the crowd ridiculed them saying, they're just drunk, that's all it is. Verse 11, then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, make no mistake, these people are not drunk. As some are assuming, no, this was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel, as recorded in Joel 2, 28. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my Holy Spirit, even on my servants, both men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke, and the sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red, and that great and before the great and glorious day of the Lord appears. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter went on to say, God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene. God knew this would happen. God you nailed him to a cross, but God released him from the horrors of death, raised him back to life, for death did not keep him in his grip. Peter went on in the verses following to witness of Jesus Christ, his power at work explaining salvation. In verse 38, he explained how people must repent of their sins, turn to God, be baptized in the name of Jesus for forgiveness of sins. And then he says in verse 38, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is a promise for all of you. Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Verse 41, those who believe what Peter said were baptized, and the church was grown by 3,000 people that day. It goes on to say in verse 47 of Acts 2, each day the Lord continued to add to the fellowship of those who were being saved. This is a powerful experience. This is the birth of the church, this is available for us today, this same power. We see another instance, the second instance, 
where there was filling of the Holy Spirit, but there was no speaking in tongues. We find this after the Jerusalem believers prayed. They had been arrested. They were jailed. Then another 5,000 people believed. Do the math. 8,000 people recorded here being believers. And again, they were filled with the Holy Spirit's witness. And then this happened, Acts 4, 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They preached the Word of God with boldness. And it's interesting to note that these same people were people who were filled before in Acts 2. These were the believers. These were Peter and others. So this reminds me, we need to be refilled. I had a friend that used to say, we're leaky buckets. We get filled with the Holy Spirit's power. We're sent out in mission and we, we work for the Lord. But then at times, because of the weariness of life, because of distractions, we can become leaky buckets and we need to be refilled. We see in other instance where in the New Testament in Acts chapter 8, verses 14 to 17, people were filled with the Holy Spirit's power. The apostles laid hands on new believers to receive the Holy Spirit, and they were, they were filled. That's, that's powerful. So we can lay hands on people, and they will be filled. We also see another instance in Acts chapter 9, where Ananias lays hands on Saul, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit's power. It says, in fact, in Acts 9.22, that Saul's preaching became more and more powerful. It talked about the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 9, verse 31, this power is available to you and I. Sometimes we wonder, why am I discouraged? Sometimes we wonder, why can't I encourage others? Well, we need the Holy Spirit to empower us, to fill us, to flow through us. We see again the infilling of the Holy Spirit in another instance in Acts chapter 10. Here, there's a guy named Cornelius. Say that word with me. Cornelius, and he lived in... Caesarea, two C's, Cornelius, Caesarea, and his household were all Gentiles. They were non-Jewish people, and they were very open. Peter came in Acts 10, 44, and he spoke to them and told them about Jesus, and while he was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on them, and they were filled. Peter was amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on non-Jewish people at this time. That was very unique. And I love what it says in verse 46. This is really, really important. Verse 46 says, Peter was amazed that they received the gift of the Spirit because, or for, they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. So we see here the principle in Scripture that how we know someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak in other languages, not learned, not mother tongue, that the Holy Spirit gives utterance to. Four. So Peter replied and said in verse 47, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they've received the Holy Spirit just like we did? In fact, this was a really big thing, so Peter had to give account. He had to explain this to the other believers in Acts 11 because it was a bit of a stir. Is this real? Is this possible? How can this happen with these people that we didn't even know really could know God at that time, says the first believers? And he even in Acts 18 gives a very clear example and, and announcement to the church council at Jerusalem, Acts 15, verse 8. God knows people's hearts, he says. He confirmed that he accepts these people by giving them the Holy Spirit, just like he did to us. The last instance as we wrap up this teaching today that I want to outline is found in Acts chapter 19. On Paul's third missionary journey to Ephesus, we see that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He asked them. No, they replied. We, we haven't even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. So Paul said in verse 3, Then what baptism did you experience? He asked, and they replied, the baptism of John. Paul said in verse 4 of Acts 19, Well, John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John told you himself, people would believe in one who would come, meaning Jesus, that would have a greater baptism. In verse 5, as soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord, and the, Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, 
and they spoke in other tongues, languages, and prophesied. They prophesied. So we see here a principle of God filling and an initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues. God does it. He does the work. He has great power for us today. Here comes Pastor Laura. As the worship team comes back. This week, Pastor Chad and I were working on upgrading the church sampling computer. So Pastor Chad was on the floor and I was throwing down cords behind the counter for him to plug in. At one point, he yelled to me, hey, throw down the power to me. It reminded him of today's Pentecost Sunday celebration. At that early church birthing at the Feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem, the believers were to gather and wait until God sent the power to them to marvelously accomplish the mission of spreading the gospel of peace through faith in Jesus. The same power source is here for us today. So how do we spring forward with faith in God? What's your power source? The Lord Jesus lived, loved, and labored in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Modern-day followers of Jesus Christ will utterly fail to be true followers of Christ if they neglect to properly respond to the guidance and power that are available through the Holy Spirit. We need to make a response of faith to the presence and purpose of the Holy Spirit who has come to dwell and fully fill our hearts. The Holy Spirit is in the world today speaking with a tender voice to those who need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So what is your power source that you are plugging into? Do you need to accept this power source? Why don't you text the word accept to 506-634-1688 right now? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the power source. I thank you, Lord, that we have not been left alone, but you have given us your advocate, the Holy Spirit, that we are not orphans, but that you are with us faithfully each day in and out. Lord, I pray right now for those who do not know this power. I pray, God, that you would open up their hearts, that they would feel your Holy Spirit moving within them to say, hey, have you thought about Jesus? Lord, I pray they would make that step towards you. And Lord, I pray for those who already do know you and have a relationship with you. I pray, God, that we would open up our hearts to more of you, that, Lord, we would live in the power source of the Holy Spirit.
be refilled, be strengthened, be driven by His Holy Spirit. God bless you. We can't wait until we can meet with you again soon. God bless you.